Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a new 100 amp hour battery from Time USB. It's a 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Okay, <clears throat> when you first open it up, we have a uh, nice Time USB pamphlet right here, which has a product manual and some stickers it looks like. On the very top, we have a baggie with the post bolts. All right, we also have a nice thick piece of styrofoam to protect the battery. And here is the battery right here. All right, and right off the bat, the first thing I notice is that this battery is pretty small. Uh, it, it, I mean, it says group 24, so it will fit a, uh, into like RV battery boxes just fine. Uh, and look at it compared to their 50 amp hour variety. Here is the Time USB 50 amp hour. And you can tell that it's only, you know, it's only a couple inches longer and a couple inches taller. And width wise, you know, they're the same, they're the same depth. For just a little bit bigger, you're getting double the capacity. Second, it doesn't come with nylon handles. It comes with these plastic handles which makes it easier to carry, in my opinion. Um, it does come with terminal covers, which is always nice. Uh, it has epoxy terminals, and I believe the whole thing is IP65 rated, so it is waterproof. And the back and the front show the, the same thing. Uh, it shows the, uh, the service email, the uh, website, <clears throat> and that it's a 1280 watt hour 12.8 uh, volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Okay, the little baggie that came with it does come with two sets of post bolts. They are M8. They come with uh, post covers. And it actually came with uh, two extra washers. Uh, to tell you a little about the uh, physical dimensions of this battery, the weight is 10.5 kilograms or 23.15 pounds. It is 329 millimeters in length, 214 millimeters tall, and the depth is 172 millimeters. Uh, when it comes to the BMS inside, um, it is a charge and discharge max at 100 amps, so it can handle a 1C rate. And it also says that it can handle 280 amp discharge for 5 seconds, so we'll be testing that in a little bit. And also, you're expected to get about 4,000 cycles out of this before you start to see a diminishment of the uh, capacity. And the best part about it is that it comes with a five-year warranty, so that is great. Okay, the first thing you should do when you get your lithium iron phosphate battery is test the voltage. When it's shipped to you, it should be shipped between 13.1 volts and 13.2 volts. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, 13.19, so that is perfect. You want to do that to first make sure that the battery actually works. And then secondly, you want to make sure that they're not storing your batteries at a very high rate of charge. Like, you know, if it was at 13.8, um, that would be bad. And it's not a very low state of charge, like uh, 11. <laughs> you know, if it was stored at 11, you would not get very many charge cycles out of this battery. It would be probably permanently damaged as soon as you as soon as you got it so always check your voltage to make sure uh, that it's in the proper range 13.1 to 13.2 volts and then you are set to go and charge it up to full so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and charge this all the way up and then we're going to do a capacity test to make sure that we're getting the 100 amp hours that we paid for okay the battery capacity is done for this time usb 100 amp hour battery and the result is 104.36 amp hours, which is 1,281.46 watt hours. And this test took 10 hours and 21 minutes at a 10 amp hour draw. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this thing back up and we're gonna go ahead and do some max amperage withdrawal tests. All right, so I've got the Time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery charged back up to full. And we are going to do a max amperage test. What that means is that we're going to do, we're going to pull 100 amps for about five minutes just to make sure it can do it. And then I'm also going to do a 200 amp draw just to see if it will 
do that for a while, see how long it lasts until it shuts itself down. It shouldn't really power 200 amps for more than, you know, 10 seconds, let alone a couple minutes. Um, and then we're gonna go and do a max amp draw test because it, I was mistaken. I think I said that it could do 280 amps. Um, in, the, in the manual, it actually says that it can do a 400 amp discharge for one second. So we're gonna try to power my shopsmith to see if it will actually start up the shopsmith, which not too many 100 amp hour batteries can do. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this test. What I have is the Time USB battery. I have a 5,000 watt inverter from MX Moonfree. And then I have a 1200 watt griddle right here. And that will be roughly 100 amps. And then after the 100 amps, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my new wave. I'm gonna give it another 1300 watts, which is like 110 amps. So that's what's gonna happen. But we're gonna go ahead and do 100 amps first for five minutes. Okay, that griddle was only doing 90 amps, so I went ahead and introduced a little 200 watt heater, and here's what our results are now for our amperage. We are pulling 110 amps, and it will lower down once the heater uh, heats up all the way. So it looks like we're doing 105 amps now, so we'll go ahead and let that run. And I'll just keep this timer running for, we'll just keep it running for six minutes. Okay, well the timer is just at six minutes right now, and this battery has performed beautifully. It's still pulling 105 amps. It, I mean, I would have gotten my thermal camera out, but it doesn't even feel like the battery is doing anything. It's same room temperature, cabling's room temperature, and the inverter's 5,000 watts, so it's not having any issues whatsoever. So this, this has worked great. So let's go ahead and introduce 1,300 more watts. Let's go ahead and put this on max sear and start, see what happens. All of a sudden our amperage is now 200 amps. 221. The time is 646. And the side of the inverter shows that the, the, the battery is at 11.4, uh, 11.5 volts. And you know what? My griddle just got all the way hot. So it shut off and now the amperage is back down to 113. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that cool off a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a 1500 watt space heater and kick that on. Now this is gonna be a whopper of a test. Um, let me show you what I'm gonna be powering for. I'm only gonna do this for about 30 seconds because honestly the battery should shut off under a heavy load like this. We're not talking a one second dispersion of power or even a 10 second 280 amp hour dispersion. Uh, I'm going to be powering a 1500 watt heater, uh, 1300 watt induction cooktop, and I let this griddle cool down for a little bit so it will heat back up, and also this little 200 watt heater. So we're looking at, we're looking at over probably 300 amps uh, going through this. So here we go. Just to show you right now we're pulling about uh, one amp. So first let's start boiling some water. Start that. Amperage is at 112.5. Let's go ahead and kick on this heater. Amperage is at 140, 141. Let's go ahead and kick on this heater. Amperage is now at 293. Let's go ahead and kick on this. Amperage is at 390. And the inverter is starting to freak out because the, the voltage is too low. It's at 10.5 volts. So the, invo the inverter is, is beeping. We're at 387 amps right now. And we're, he we're heating all of this stuff. The wattage is 3,640 on the inverter right here. 
It's been doing it for now 30 seconds. 385 amps. So yeah, this thing doesn't shut off at all. It has, I don't think it has any uh, high amperage protection at all. Let's go ahead and shut this down. Now that I feel like it kind of failed the max amp test because I feel like it should have shut off. Um, I just don't like the fact that it will keep running because I think the internals will just start melting at that high of an amperage for that amount of time. But it does say that it can spike uh, up to 400 amps and that means it should be able to power this shopsmith over here. Um, as long as you have the proper inverter that can power it also. So um, I got my amp meter set to max amperage cat, you know, so it's gonna try to capture the max amperage. I don't know if it's really gonna work, I, but I wanna try it. And I don't have too many 100 amp hour batteries I can actually start this uh, Shopsmith up. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Ready, three, two, one. Nope. And let's see what our amperage is. 411 amps. So, um, yeah, that part of it worked. Uh, it tried to pull 411 amps, but the battery shut off. Uh, as you can tell, the inverter is off now, so the battery needs to be uh, powered back on by a 12 volt source because the battery is sleepy time. Okay, so what are my thoughts on the Time USB 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery? Well, it being the Pro 2 model, it can power up to 400 amps for one second. And in our test, I tried to power our Shopsmith and it gave me 411 amps before it shut off. It also, the capacity of it is great. Uh, it gave us about 105 amp hours, which is what you want from a 100 amp hour battery. Um, I like how it is a smaller form factor, so I think it fits nicely with uh, other Group 24 batteries if you're wanting to make this a replacement. Also with the physicality of it, I do like these, I like the plastic handles. I feel like I can just handle the battery uh, better, I guess. I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. Um, the one thing that I don't like about it is that it can do that 400 amps, but it will do it continuously. I got this thing up to 385 amps and it ran that for like 30 seconds before I decided I wanted to shut this off because um, the internals just would get way too hot. And so I really feel like it should only power that for five or 10 seconds. You know, it says that it's a max 100 amp draw, um, but it can do way more than that. So uh, just keep that into consideration if you're gonna buy this battery. It can, it can, do, it can do 400 amps. It, you know, we tested 380 amps and it will just run it and run it and run it. It will probably run it until either the internal temperature gets too hot and it shuts off or uh, something inside breaks. So this thing is a powerhouse, but you just need to be careful with it. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Time USB battery, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, I'll have a link to this in my description, so if you want to click on that to read more about this battery, you sure can. Thanks again for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.